Now, health experts say that working in an office could be as bad for you as smoking. Well, research of over a million people published in the medical journal The Lancet found that sitting behind a desk for eight hours a day increases the risk of premature death by 60%. But scientists say this risk could be eliminated by doing one hour of exercise a day, like taking a brisk walk or cycling. The chance of dying early was also increased by watching TV for more than three hours a day while snacking. Researchers estimate that physical inactivity costs the UK around £1.7 billion a year and more than £50 billion to the global economy in terms of lost productivity and medical costs. That's the size of Costa Rica's economy. And the study suggests that it's associated with more than 5 million deaths across the world each year, with links to heart disease, diabetes, dementia, as well as some cancers. Last year, nearly a quarter of adults and 80% of teenagers fail to do two and a half hours of exercise a week as recommended by the World Health Organization. If you do have long sitting hours, if you spend more than eight hours per day sitting, you may want to increase your physical activity to more than 30 minutes per day or the 150 minutes per week which is recommended. I think taking short breaks if possible, maybe every hour, a few minutes, maybe four, three, four, five minutes every hour, stand up from your desk, go upstairs, go and grab a, a cup of coffee or something like that would be very good for, 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 for those ones who have office-based jobs. Well, the GP and medical school lecturer, Dr James Gill, joins us now live from Warwick. A very good afternoon to you. The headlines today all suggesting that working in an office, sitting behind a desk for eight hours a day, is worse for you than smoking. Does that come as any surprise to you? Well, not really. This is something that we've been aware of for many years. And I think one way of taking what the study is saying is that your chair is basically trying to kill you. But in regard to that, they're giving you also a way to battle through this. It's about getting out of your, getting out of your seat and actually using the time that you've got. But people get very worried about this, this goal of 60 minutes of activity. And they think that it's about strapping on lycra and going for a run and collapsing in a pool of sweat afterwards. What we need to change is this view of exercise into activity. It's one of the reasons that activity trackers sell so well these days, because people are beginning to realise that they need to keep active. That 60 minutes people think is very hard to achieve, because they're thinking of it as a single block of time. Instead, if you try and incorporate that into your day, such as you've just heard, Parking on, if you're in a multi-storey car park at work, parking at a higher level and walking into work. Um, when you go to the supermarket, using the space that is furthest from the supermarket door, rather than trying to get us as close as possible, as we usually do. Making sure that you take time over lunch to actually stand up and go and buy your lunch, rather than sitting there at the desk. We've known these things for a while, and it's now getting that message out to say that we can help with these things. You can do something yourself. Possibly the best way of looking at it, as I say, your chair is trying to kill you. Getting out of your chair and doing something is better than anything, better than just sitting there. Trying to increase your activity by a small amount, heading towards that 60%, go 60 minute goal, is still better than doing nothing at all. And why is it so bad for you? In what can that, it do to you? Well, another study has shown that if you increase your activity to 60 minutes, then if you have something like diabetes, your body doesn't respond well to insulin. By increasing your activity to 60 minutes, you, re you improve how effective that insulin works in your body. Now, the study has said if you don't do activity, if you're sitting there all the while, you're not getting that reduction in insulin resistance, so you're increasing the risk of getting fat, getting diabetes, having strokes, having heart attacks, all of the things that we know are associated with insulin and exercise. Well, yes, and the current advice, I think, is to do about half an hour of brisk exercise a day. Uh, this report suggests that we should double that. It's an awful lot. The, the research is also timed, I think, to coincide with the Olympics uh, coming up. When the Olympics were in London, the, the, the big message was it would give us a, a legacy that people across the country would be inspired to take up sport. What's, what's your feeling about that? Do you see any evidence that people's attitudes have changed towards exercise and sport? 
Now I think it's very important to differentiate between exercise and sport. Lots of people now realise that they need to be active and that's about getting out and doing something. Going for a walk simply, taking your time to get off the bus one stop early and walking into work. The Olympics have shown people the need for that activity and people are, people are taking that on themselves. They're buying devices, they're buying fitness trackers, they're buying intelligence scales, things so that they can monitor their own health and so that they can build on what we've seen with the Olympics. The Olympics is a great example to us of what is possible for the human body. And what we need to do is not be frightened by those uh, huge goals that people set, but realise what we can do for ourselves. And that's about viewing it as activity, merely keeping active, getting out of your chair, moving, going to the other side of the room to you know, pick up the photocopier, empty the bins, things that get you out of your chair. And we are realising that now. Okay. In practice, we're seeing a large number of people who are okay, having big effects on their diabetes with that. Okay, Dr. James Gill, all good advice for us there. Thanks very much indeed.